Uh, according to Diane, we're going to be able to see the full show. Okay, good. Good. Full show sounds good. I hope that's that's accurate and that comes to fruition. Hey, I'm making some new friends here with the guys here at 211 Echo Battery. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. Let's introduce each other. My name is Corporal Keenan. My name is Staff Sergeant Scott. My name is Corporal Guevara. Okay. And this, you were explaining to me, is a 155 millimeter how howitzer. What would this be used for? Uh, sir, this is pretty much used for to support the infantry. That's what we do. So we're you know, miles away from the fight, uh, pretty much just sending rounds down range to support any kind of units that need our help. So that's what we train for. And what kind of range do these shells have? Around 3,000. 3,000 meters? Or feet? Uh, so yeah, they, they, they go anywhere up to about um, 30 clicks, which is about 30,000 meters. So uh, 30 kilometers, we're looking at about 15 miles. Uh, for everyone who doesn't use the metric system around here. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So when we hear uh, an, an alert from Camp Pendleton saying that we may, you know, your live fire exercises, we might hear loud noises, is this one of the guns they're using up at Pendleton? Oh, absolutely, sir. Absolutely. So do you start on this, or do you work your way up to a gun this magnitude? Uh, I mean, f each... I mean, you start out, like, if you're asking, like, you start out as a cannoneer, like, right now, me and Corporal Guevara here, we're section chiefs. So that's pretty much, uh, I mean, the peak of artillery is the best job that you could have as us. But you can work it. Uh, other guys, like, you can start off as cannons like we did. Some people go straight to, there's other weapon systems like HIMARS. They go straight to that. Or some people, like, are cannons, HIMARS, like, chiefs for a lot of different weapon systems. But us in particular, we just cannons, the howitzer. All right. So. And Staff Sergeant, you were telling me... Uh Axed this year as always. We're live at MCAS Miramar making new friends. Paul, Lauren, back to you. Before they wander off, can you ask one of those guys how many rounds they can fire before the, they, they melt the tube? Be, before they melt the tube? Yeah, how many, I mean, how many rounds, like, say in a, in a field fight, how many rounds could they, could 100 rounds, 1,000 rounds before they have to replace the, the tube? Quick question. Paul wants to know, how many rounds can you fire through this thing before you have to replace the tube? Technical terms. So that really all depends on what we call tube wear. So usually these will last for a very long time. Um, if we talk about recent missions that have taken place across, you know, across the ocean, um, that's three to four months of, a, of them firing pretty much nonstop. But generally these tubes will last for years. Really? Wow. Yes. Okay, good. There you go, Paul. Government wow. money well spent. Th that's cha that's changed from say like the Vietnam days when the, you know a big firefight you'd have to do it on the fly. Yeah. So, woo. Yeah, little little different. Yeah. She's a beast. Wow. 
Oh, wait, wait, we got a dummy round over here. Where is this? It's all right here. Oh, look, here, here you go. Here's Ooh. your visual, Paul. And you can, you, they can. Uh, that weighs anywhere from 92 to about 102 pounds with our largest round being the Excalibur, which we utilize a two-man lift for that. Um, but normally these are picked up by one Marine. So any of these Marines here, we hold them with the responsibility of picking that up and loading that every time. What happens if you drop it? Well, hopefully your foot's not in the way. <laughs> Yikes. All right, so there you go. Man, they can... F Jason, you care to try to lift it up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, herniate himself. Or any of the volunteers. Uh-oh, oh, he's going to do it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> Be yeah. Kaboom! No, this thing's going! Sometimes we get missions that can be, you know, up to 20, 30 rounds. And that's them continuously picking that up and loading it one at a time. And um, so, you know, each of these cannoneers, once they go through their training, uh, that's what they're expected to do, is to be able to pick that up and not stop. Because, I mean, you know, whoever we're shooting for, we can't. Yeah. Well, Paul's really curious. He's the guy that would come out here and plug his ears and kick it as hard as he could. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we, we try to stay away from doing that. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, cool. yeah, it's wow. it's wow. really heavy is what it is. So there I you mean, go, guys. The I mean, you, you don't even need a gym membership. The biceps no. you have coming out after Jeez, that. deadlifts. Deadlifts. You're just no. constantly lifting and putting this that in. We should we should call it the total gym. Yeah. <laughs> All those dudes That's behind you look like they uh, are in shape too, so they probably do it a lot during. Oh yeah. The Jason, I really expected you to make a joke. I'm very impressed. That's, Good you know, job. What we use to hook up to the front of the house so we can tow it. All right, thanks. Truck. Yeah. That thing there is ridiculously heavy. Everything's heavy out here. Everything's heavy. Everything's heavy. Yeah. Now here watch. You go. Jason's gonna herni be herniated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's not gonna All right. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go to urgent care now. Thanks a lot, guys. His <laughs> belly button's outside his jacket right now. <laughs> You're a good sport, Jason. <laughs> Great uh, job. That was fun. All right. Thank you, Jason. Good live shot. <laughs> wow. Man, to hurl that 15 miles across the co county. That's I know. Take some. Hi. Hello. 